to say it in the book. Don't do that. Don't do that, right? You know, be consistent. Don't lie to yourself. See, be honest with yourself. Circumspect and look at yourself and be honest about how you're worshiping God. Is it through legalism or is it through your spirit? And what does God want? God wants your spirit, your heart. He said his true worshipers are those who are worshiping, those who worship the right way. We talked about it on, on two weeks ago. Are doing it from a sense of their spirit and truth. Not just the truth of God's word, but in the how they're doing, right? It matters. Don't just be so legalistic about it. So we'll close in prayer. So Father, we thank you for this time and opportunity we have again to learn from you, understand your spirit, your truth, and understanding of the origins of Christmas, the knowledge that you have given through the years and how you have done it is beyond my comprehension. I, I acknowledge and admit and confess to you that I have been frustrated many times by not seeing how you do things. Then you remind me in your word that it's, I'm not the only one. How frustrated it must have been for these people, from the people in the Garden of Eden, the man and Eve, to Jacob and Joseph and his other brother, to Moses, to Daniel, to Isaiah, to Micah, Zechariah. You have little snippets of your coming as the Messiah. And yet the dominant people through all these thousands of years, the dominant message was just not there. And to mix in there later on, 700 years before you would come as a baby boy, that that's how you would do it. So thank you so much for reminding us that your ways are not our ways, your thoughts are not our thoughts, and to not be judgmental, to not be legalistic, to be in our spirit of truth, to worship you within our heart and our conviction within our own mind, heart, soul, and spirit of not what we do or don't do makes us righteous or unrighteous. It's by the how and the why and disposition of our heart and our mind and our soul being committed to you, seeing your hand in all things. First and foremost, to worship you as the living God, understand you as our living word, written word in the scriptures, and to have you as our source of our reasons to why we do what we do and to have us be always questioning ourselves, not for other people's benefits or detriments, but to always question ourselves to see where we need to have our wicked ways rooted out from within us, as David says, to create in us a new heart of God and a steadfast spirit and to have us be broken and contrite where we know you'll never despise that. So I confess my sins where my past has been and the present has been astray from you in different ways, whether it be materialism, the worldly influences, but have us all this time of the year be more focused than ever before the purpose and the reason and the understanding of Christmas, a light and darkness, your love among hate, your purity among sinful corruption, your endearing love and compassion humbled amongst arrogant, self-absorbed humans. You did all of that during this memory of this holiday. So maybe remember that beautiful way you did it and the form that you took as a little baby boy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We ask for this blessing upon us this Christmas season, and we ask in Jesus, Yeshua's name we pray, amen. I got a voice for a star. I got all preachy, preachy. <laughs> I think I scared Nancy a little bit there. <laughs>